Welcome everyone. My name is Ana Maria and I'm leading the community project here at Butter. And I would like to do a quick pulse check if uh, there are any, if there's anyone in the room that it's for the very, very, very first time in Butter. Go find the React Ooh. button. Okay, I see some waving. Yes, okay, Jade and Marlies, all right. <laughs> That's why so, you had to let me in twice, I think. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> so you know what? I thought I was in the right in the wrong thing at all. Perfect. You nailed it. Got you it. Exactly. You're here. So uh, if you go to the left side of your screen, you're going to find the chat and the React button. Find me the React button and give me a thumbs down. Haven't haven't seen haven't seen butter before. You're, we're go yes, there we go. So we're, we are going to play with those reactions today. And with the chat, feel free to open that and have that as well. Now, um, I'm going to pop a couple of links in the chat for you as well. So you can check out Butter. There's discounts codes. There's like all the good stuff. Hey, Dini, I see you found the gifts. That's awesome. Uh, before we start, the session is being recorded and will be shared on YouTube and with the Butter community. And I am super, super excited to have Meg Bolger yet again hosting an event for our community. <laughs> Uh, those of you who don't know Mag, she is a professional facilitator geek. I love that. And she's the captain of facilitator cards. And facilitator cards, uh, I strongly encourage you to check it out, were the result of a happy accident of unpreparedness <laughs> in a session that eventually became this pocket size activity library used by facilitators around the world. One extra reason why I'm super excited, looking forward to today's session, it's like super disclaimer, it's the first event we're hosting since the massive product update we had on Monday. Uh, not a big change for participants, but the way we in the background plan and manage the in-session experience has a massive makeover. So let's experiment with that together with that with an open mind. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Susanna. I <laughs> And there we go. Thank you for being with us today, Meg, and for being the first host that tests out our new session planner. The floor is yours. Take it away. All right. Hello, hello. So great to see some new and familiar faces. Um, I'm Meg Bolger. I uh, got a little lovely intro there from Ana Maria, so I won't do a, a ton of background on me. Know that um, what I spend most of my time doing is teaching facilitators. I say teaching people how to teach, teaching facilitators how to facilitate. Um, and uh, yeah, as Ana Maria mentioned, I am a facilitation geek and a bit of a tech nerd and uh, somebody who really likes um, playing and testing out and like experimenting with things. So uh, we are going to be doing some experiments today for the first time in Butter. Um, I also, as Ana Maria mentioned, Butter changed the like planning process and what it looks like for us facilitators on the back end. And so um, one thing I'll just share is that I actually recorded myself setting up the agenda for this session. And I will also be sharing that um, in um, after the session. And I'm I'm screen recording as well as we're recording in Butter, so that you can also see what this looks like on my end to do all of the things that we're going to do today. So um, I know as a facilitator, whenever I'm in a session, I'm like half paying attention to what they're asking me to do, and I'm half paying attention to like how did they just do that, and what does the buttons look like on their side, and so. Hopefully knowing that that's coming, you can just be fully present and enjoy the experience knowing that you can get access to that, all of that afterward. So uh, we're gonna be trying to, or we're gonna be kind of like uh, bouncing around in Butter using different tools in order to kind of like know and kind of hack into like, what is the potential of this platform and why might we use this versus using other, other platforms? Because I facilitate a lot in Zoom and there are some particular things we're gonna try today that I'm like, if I was going to have that in my agenda, um, this might be the place where I would want to do it. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. We're going to get to know each other as uh, the like next thing. We're gonna do a bit of a warm up and a bit of a like, hello, how are you? Who are you? Um, so before we jump into breakout rooms together, um, I am gonna ask you to do a one minute, uh, one minute reflection. So if you can find on the left side with that toolbar at the bottom, there's a thing that says notes. So if you open that up, those are just for you. No one else will um, have access to those. Those are just your private notes. And um, what I would like you to do is I, I'm gonna set a timer for 60 seconds as soon as I stop talking. And I'd like you to just reflect in those notes on these two questions. How are you today? And who are you today? 
Okay, so two questions. Um, if, you, if you forget what they are, up at the top where it says warm up, if you hover over that, it says, how are you today and who are you today? So I'm gonna set a timer, 60 seconds, just free write in your private notes and then we'll do a bit of connection after that. Okay, I'm gonna do it too. Okay. So I'm going to have you wrap up uh, your little silent reflection. And what we're going to do now is we are going to get a moment to connect with one, possibly two other people. And in our breakout rooms, we're going to just have, uh, we're going to have about five minutes. And I'm going to invite you to do something uh, a bit different in terms of introductions. So what I'm going to invite you to do is each person will have two minutes to share with the other person. And the way I want you to share is to finish this sentence stem. The sentence stem is I am blank. So for two minutes, all you can do to say to the other person is I am and finish that sentence. Okay. The other person, your job is to listen. And if that person gets stuck, you can say, tell me more. And that's it. Okay. So two minutes, then we'll switch. I will broadcast a message into the chat that says switch. Um, there will also, I think, be a timer. So whenever you start, if you want to glance up at that, and, and uh, you can uh, you can check that out. But I will let you know when it's time to switch. If you end up in a room with three people, you'll just need to like kind of feel out the timing a little bit. Uh, but that's what we're gonna do. Just say, you know, you can say hello. I'm this person. But then um, after that, only sentences that start with I am. Any questions about those directions? Okay, if you are, um, that's it, that's all you need to know. So I am going to start the breakout rooms and I'll see you back here shortly. Hello, welcome back. Hi, Dean. We've got a couple, <laughs> we've got a couple of folks just talking straight through that message that pops up, which is totally well, fine. And yeah. we're all back. That's what I found out because the message was covering uh, covering my partner. So you can't you can't move it away. <laughs> no, you can't. It is a bit of a it's a bit of um uh yeah, poking. You know, it kind of yeah. is like you can ignore this, but only so much. Um no, you can't yeah, <laughs> for sure. So um I would love to know, um, I would love to know um did you stick to the script or did you go off script and uh uh just have a general conversation versus starting every sentence with i am um uh and we'll use the q feature in in butter to like get some comments and and some thoughts so on the left side below the react button there's a thing that says q and if you have a, a comment uh you can just hit that and we can we can see how that function works as well. But I'd love to know kind of like, um, yeah, what happened in your intros and did did the, the structure that I gave you work or did you kind of go off script? Um, yeah, Suzanne. Great, thanks. I, I think I just wanted to hit that button to, just to understand what happened. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. But all good, I'm, I'm going first. Um, so um, it, it was great. I, I was with Melinda and JJ in a, um, in a uh, breakout and, um, I think we basically, besides kind of the "Hey, welcome," I'm I'm um, I'm excited to be here. Um, we kind of stick to the "I am," um, and then after our tour of the three of us, I kind of asked the question: Are we allowed not to ask questions? So kind of <laughs> <laughs> really wondering um, as to when we could move from that set. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, so mostly stuck to it, but then felt like. Ooh, like, are we doing something wrong if we if we if we keep sticking to it, or can we just chat now? Yeah, yeah, great. Um, yeah, Mar is it Marlies? Yep. Okay. Yeah, similar pattern. I think I th we we stuck to it for ninety percent. I would say of the time to I am, but then I think we had decided it was finished and that we could just <laughs> move on. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Um, is it is it Sylvan or Sylvian? Um, you said that you couldn't stick to it. Could you tell us a little bit about that experience? Oh, we, we, we stick to it. Uh, we both stick to it, but uh, when we end, we will still have uh, one or two minutes. So for that final uh, one or two minutes, we, we chat uh, Got it. more freely. 
Got it. Yeah, it's amazing how like it was really was only about two minutes each, but it's it's kind of amazing to me how quickly that can feel like a long time. And you feel like, sure. oh, this is this is a long time. When I've done it in person with people, um, some people will just end up sitting inside because they're just like, if I really can't say anything for two minutes, like I don't know what else to say. So yeah, so that that was kind of universally experienced was that two minutes we didn't need the full two minutes to do it, and therefore we we kind of like moved on um, to the next person. One question I have from a facilitator, uh, like kind of facilitator perspective, is: um, Were you able to see, or did you notice the broadcasts, or not as much? I see a little bit, Melinda. What do you mean? What's the shaky, shaky, iffy hand? Oh, you're muted. I'm sorry. If you hit M or uh, top right is mic. Yeah. All right. There we go. Okay. I I just I they sort of came up in the corner, and then I didn't. I guess what I couldn't tell if there was a new one or if the one I saw down there was the same one. Got it. Yep. So that wasn't as clear. Okay. That's great to know. Um, yeah. So I, I think that they, they kind of all stay in the same place or you can kind of access them continuously, but it wasn't clear to you. And I, I also find broadcasts in general are sometimes a little distracting to people. Um, when I'm facilitating in Zoom, I'll often send them twice because they disappear. And I wonder if that actually would, even though they are permanent here, I wonder if that would still be helpful because you could just be like, oh, there was something. Oh, there it is again. I bet it's the same thing like because it was just five seconds ago. So um, that's the thought I had. All right. So Ana Maria asked this uh, at the very beginning, um, but I would love to know the answer to this. And we're going to do it on a poll. Um, so before today, have you ever used butter before Used butter as a participant or have you used it, um, as a facilitator and Sylvian, I see your question of purposefully scripting intros. Yeah, I will, uh, I'll, I'll get into that if we have time. So I'd love everyone to answer this poll. Um, do, do I'm going to do it as well. Okay. So we've got five people who have used it as a facilitator, one person who's used it before as a participant, and three people have never been in this before. Awesome. Um, uh, okay, cool. So that was just me wanting to um, kind of get a lay of the land. Um, this is a funny thing about the polls and butter. There's always a winner, at least with these kind of like multiple choice. And I'm like, well, no, everyone's a winner. Something that you should just be forewarned about. It always chooses the winner as uh, the whatever gets answered the most. Um, okay, so there are two features, two things that I um, like really want to test out and see how they work with you. They may work really smoothly and we may get totally lost and we're going to find out together. So can you raise your physical hand uh, in your window if you have, you're all like, okay, we're doing Simon Says, fine, I'm game. Um, so can you give me uh, like a thumbs up, physical thumbs up if you have used Miro or Mural or one of the like online whiteboard tools before? Okay. Oh, okay. Like kind of cool, cool, cool. Um, okay. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to try to do a, um, an activity called spectrum questions where you kind of do on a strongly agree to strongly disagree. And we're going to try that out on a Miro board. So let us do that. Uh, okay. So I'm going to open up a Miro board and we will all see it together. So it should be loading now. So, um, there are, there's one thing I want to kind of draw your attention to before you follow the instructions and we jump into the activity. So up at the top of the Miro board, there's a bunch of kind of like tools. Um, there's a bunch of tools in the top right. And the one that's farthest to the left is this little cursor icon with two lines next to it. If you click that, um, it's a way to hide or show collaborators' cursors. And I think it will be more. Uh, like it'll be a calmer experience if you hide everyone's cursor. So click that and ideally you should see nobody's cursor flying around the screen anymore. Um, and if you, so that, that button is the, in the top right toolbar, but all the way to the left. Um, so if you've done that, my next instruction is for you to find a, grab a sticky note and put your initials on that sticky note. 
And if you need to activate your cursor, if you're like, I can't click anything on the right, or I'm sorry, on the left side, uh, the toolbar at the top, there is a little cursor icon where it says select. And if you do that, you should be able to grab something. Okay, can everybody uh, put your sticky note down here kind of in line with my MB sticky note? See if you can get it. Yeah, yeah, cool, we'll all crowd around. Perfect, okay, yep. Okay, we got some resizing of sticky notes going on. Okay, if anyone is lost before we get started, please unmute and tell me if you're, I'm like totally lost, Meg, I have no idea what's happening. I'm just having a lot of, it's just taking a long time to load. So I, when you're saying, oh, you can see all the sticky notes, I only see mine, but it's starting to like load up, so. Okay. Great. So one thing that that's really helpful, I really appreciate you sharing that, is that um, I would say that this is probably like a, a more um, heavy activity for your computer to do, right? Your computer right now is trying to bring in your webcam, bring in your microphone, and is trying to load this like very interactive piece. So, um, okay, so two people are having kind of like tech issues in accessing this. So um, I'm gonna do, we're gonna do the activity to see if it works for the people it's working for, but I just wanna like flag that for as facilitators, like this is not working for all of us so far. Um, would would you mind like, telling me what the question was? Oh, oh. oh the, the question was, I haven't asked a question yet. I've just oh. been like, are we all caught up to this? Is it working? Can we all like move okay. our, uh, our pieces? Okay, Jane said your sticky note seems stuck. Mm -hmm. If that's true, Jane, you can pick another sticky note if you would like um, and uh, see if you can move that one. Nothing should be locked down, which is the only reason they should be stuck. Um, okay, we're gonna try the first, we're gonna try uh, and see if this will work. So we've got strongly disagree and we've got strongly agree and I'm gonna say a statement and I'm gonna ask you to put your sticky note, the sticky note with your initials on it, wherever that aligns. Oh, so, Meg, am I moving yours because I'm also MB? When he's ah, perfect. Me. Yeah, that's fine. You can you, you can take that, take that MB, <laughs> and uh, I'll I'll just observe. Um, so number one thing that maybe initials we need to get more creative or put like a number or something after them. So here's my first <laughs> statement. Um, I enjoy facilitating online. Strongly disagree to strongly agree. Place your sticky note where you line up. Okay, all right. We've got some like hard, strong agrees over here. Um, okay, so S, R, or S, H. I'm trying to find who. So we've got, uh, yeah, Suzanne. So tell me a little bit, why, what do you love about facilitating online? Um, I like that you can, so easily move people into breakout rooms and get them back so you kind mm -hmm. of don't waste time and kind of chasing them out of the room or into a room or back from the coffee corner i mean that is kind of of course disturbing sometimes for the participants but for a facilitator it is so much easier and you can take a breath while they're in a breakout room you're not being observed or watched which i think is actually nice as well you mm -hmm. so you can actually have a kind of a bit of a break unless of course you you're going to help them but um that's what i really like about it Besides okay. a number of things, but that's that trouble, that's et cetera, great. but yeah. Yeah. Um, so I would love to, M Melinda, are you up for sharing why you put yourself where you did? Like what you like, but also are not, you know, what where, what what landed you there? I think uh, I wound up there because the facilitation I've been, have been doing online uh, has been a bit more public focused. So instead I'm not facilitating inside an enterprise. Mm -hmm. And so I'm dealing with a range of, of skills and a range of tools. And so if I've got someone who's trying to participate in a public focus group from a phone, then trying to use any sort of tool at all is almost impossible. It's barely mm -hmm. possible to see who else is in the meeting. And mm -hmm. so that's, and I spent quite a bit of time saying to them, like, okay, doing tech support instead got it. of facilitating. So yep. I think if my experience was more enterprise based and I was really working with inside a corporation where everyone's got their computer, I'd probably find it more fun. Got I love it. the tools. I just hate yep. the constant tech support. Got it. Yep. Don't love playing tech support. I, you got a lot of thumbs up and, uh, and love on that one. I think people were uh, with you there. Okay. Let's do another question. So my next question is, 
I enjoy facilitating online more than in person. Strongly disagree, strongly agree. Okay. Uh, who, uh, who got Rudy? Is this RA Rudy? Is that you, Rudy? Oh, you are muted. If you are, I think you are talking. Hit that microphone. It's me. Yeah. Hello, everybody. That's you. Uh, yeah. Hi. Would you, uh, would you say a little bit, um, about what, what has you landed there, Rudy? Right in the middle. Uh, sorry for the late. <laughs> I had That's some okay. client. Um, just, uh, having the, from the community and Anna Maria, uh, post about your workshop and uh, tip and switch. So I'm discovering now. Okay, great. Um, awesome. Well, we're excited to have you. Who's Thank is you. JJWM? Uh, that's, that's me. Uh, hey, JJ, would you say a little bit about um, where, why, what landed you where you are? For sure. I really love how I can much easier uh, much more easily see the progression of my facilitation skills um, throughout this transition to uh, more more online facilitation. Like, I love tech, I love tools, uh, you know, getting excited about platforms uh, is sometimes a distraction uh, <laughs> for me, but um, I really miss the fact that I if, if someone has their camera off or they're not participating in the chat, it's so much harder to read those subtle cues. So I, I think I really love what online facilitation can bring, but still mm -hmm. miss the sharing of space and being able to pick up on more subtler actions and reactions uh, of, of people in the room. Yep. Yeah, totally. Cool. Thank you for sharing. Um, was anyone surprised by their response to this? That like to like when they really thought about it, like that they were surprised by their answer. And if so, would you be up for sharing why or how you were surprised? I think I was a bit surprised considering that I had said that I found it frustrating because of the tech support issues. Um, uh -huh. I actually think I mean, it, some of the, what people have said about the ability to control the pace a bit better uh, mm -hmm. and in the, in the online and also just with some of the tools that I'm getting, um, you know, used to uh, being able to export so that if we've done a whole bunch of things and we've got a lot of, of opinions from people to export that so that I'm not, you know, we all probably have memories of piles of sticky notes and sort of on our desks and typing them into our spreadsheet so that we can actually you know, right. Get a, you know, so sure. we don't do that anymore. Now some of these yep. do that for us. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Um, all right. Let's do one. Uh, let's do two more. Well, yeah. Well, anyway, I'm going to do at least one more question. Um, okay. Here is the statement. Strongly agree. Strongly disagree. I get overwhelmed by new technologies. Strongly agree. Strongly disagree. Okay. Got some, we got a little more polarization on this one. Okay. Uh, is it, is it Dinya? Dia? Dini. Dini. Hi, Dini. Um, can you tell me a little bit about where, why, why you landed there? You're just like, oh, I love new technologies. I'm a geek, I'm a geek like that. Yes. <laughs> yes. That is exactly my reaction. I'm just a geek. I, I mean, I used, I come from innovation team. I'm always the one who kind of drive people to use new technology. So it's for me when I see new technology, it's like, oh yes, please give it to me. Let me try it. Okay. So that's that's just my my gut reaction to perfect to think. Great. Love that. Okay, we're gonna do one last question. Um, uh, I think this activity worked well. I think this activity worked well. You won't hurt my feelings with your answer. I want to know your honest answer because it does not um, does not behoove you to uh, or behoove any of us if if we're just okay. Blowing smoke. Uh, all right, Rudy, did you move your sticky to that spot on purpose? 
and tell me. Tell yeah, me I, I mean, there, uh, I just, you know, I, I, I don't like to polarize a lot because they're from to an extreme to another because there are some, you know, in between and gray zone depending the use case. So yes, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm learning to not polarize too much. Okay. And uh, to be relative because sometimes, sure. you know, you got use case on a daily basis, on, you know, weekly basis, monthly, yearly, sure. and sometimes it just depends the mood. Okay. Yep. For sure. Yeah. That uh, are affecting a lot of things. Yep. Yeah. What about, uh, is it, is it SR, that's Sylvan? Um, it, it's hard to answer because I don't know uh, your, your purpose. So to, to really be able to answer, I will need to know what you expect to get from this activity. Okay. Uh, I, I put the sticker here because I think, for example, if you do the same thing, but uh, using an open-ended question, I will be able to see the answer, the opinion of everybody, and not only the one who, who, who talk. And so this way I will probably know more about the other participant. Uh, so for that one, I will have preferred open-ended question to, to know about everybody, and not uh, only the one uh, who, who speak. Okay, so for you, when you say open-ended question, do you mean, um just a question that couldn't doesn't have to be answered in strongly agree or strongly disagree. Just like, what is your opinions on blank? That would have been more. Is that what you is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean the uh, the open ended tool in Pulse. You are open ended. You can ask a question and people uh, can input text. So uh, voila, would have preferred oh, the, uh, the same okay. question but with, with this activity to to know more about my uh, colleagues. Okay, great. So for you, uh, the, it would just been more interesting if this was like an open ended poll. So we could have seen kind of where everybody would have landed versus just like, okay, I only got to hear from a few people. Got it. Okay. Um, somebody who put strongly agree, would you tell me what did you like? I'm curious about the like, so usually I've done this activity in person, right? Where you're like walking your body over to this side of the room or that side of the room. And I'm curious if anybody was like, I've never like using Miro this way, I think actually worked. And this is what I appreciated about it. Or this is like the, you know, the experience I think we still were able to have. Does anybody want to speak to that kind of like adapting to online spectrum question? Did that work? No, go ahead, Melinda. Uh, I haven't tried to do a spectrum question online. I've never seen it. So this is a, I guess, a, a, something new I learned that it's possible to do online. And this is how you might do it. And mm -hmm. I've used spectrum questions in just for precisely the way you have, which is not to get anyone's actual opinion, like to not to get some kind of opinion I'm going to record and say, we measured X, but to say, yes, let's have a conversation. And, you know, do you think this is, I've used them in, 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 in the context of like, do you think this, this thing that happened is discriminatory or not discriminatory? All I want to do is provoke conversation. So in response to Rudy, I actually kind of like, I like it for that purpose. And I think this is an interesting online way to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. And Dee, what did you want to say? So um, I also like to ask polarizing question. I usually like ask people to move to that room to the side of the room or to that side of the room. Mm -hmm. And you can also do it online with like, I don't know, Slido, Mentimeter or all, all, all other interaction tool. But what I like with Miro is that you can actually see the thought process or like how people move from one to another. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like with Slido, you just see the results or like with mm -hmm. Mentimeter, you just see the result. You don't really see the thought process of the person behind it. But here with Miro and then seeing people moving from strongly agree to disagree or just seeing the cursor or like seeing the card kind of like, oh, where should I go? Like mm -hmm. you kind of have a more, get feeling from the group more than just a ABCD question. So Got it. I yep. might steal this one. Great. Um, I'm going to close the board. Just It's going to completely reorient us. So just know that that is true. Um, so I think that uh, what I learned as a facilitator and the main reason I use this type of activity is that 
um, I want to be able to call on people for different reasons, right? So just being able to be like, okay, I want someone over here. I want someone over here. This person haven't ta hasn't talked yet. So I'm going to ask them why you landed there, right? And that somebody could be like, yeah, I don't, I don't really want to share, but they're still sharing information with the group just by moving a sticky. Those are like some of the reasons that I, I get drawn to, um, to spectrum questions in general, in person or online. And I think the Miro worked. I think it, like for me as a facilitator, I was like, people moved and, uh, and, uh, and that was a win. So when I say it worked, I mean, uh, like functionally, we actually were able to like move our stickies from one bit to the other. Okay. So I'm going to keep us trucking along. So we've got like 20 minutes left and a couple more things to do. So, um, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to do some uh, subcommittees. So what I mean by that is each breakout room is going to tackle a different thing. Um, the what you're gonna what's gonna happen is I'm gonna place you into a breakout room, and when you get there, there should be a Google Doc that is open and editable for you. And your challenge with your group is going to be to make a pro con list for a type of facilitation. So that type could be in-person, online, or hybrid. If you get hybrid, I really want you to focus on the pros because I would love to know what are the pros to hybrid facilitation. I don't know them yet, so let's see if you can come up with them. Um, but you're gonna have about five minutes to, to try to fill out that pro-con list with your group. Um, you can all T immediately type in there and start and, and then talk afterward, that will probably produce the most information. Or you could decide we're going to have a scribe and we're just going to chat it out. Um, I'll let you decide which of those you want to do. Um, but that is what should happen. You should get into the breakout rooms. You should all have a document that either says in person, online, or hybrid. And your task is to fill out that pro con list. Okay. Um, any questions? Yes, hybrid, absolutely. That is what I mean by hybrid. Hybrid to me is like you are facilitating some people online and you are facilitating some people in person at the same time. Um, yes, you know that like grimace emoji, the like, eh, like that's how I feel about hybrid anytime somebody brings it up. So that's why I'm most curious about uh, the pros to hybrid. I bet we can come up with some. There has to be some. That's what I believe, there has to be some. Um, okay, any other questions? Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. So you are in groups of three and there is one group of two. Um, there is one group of two. I can join them. Oh, okay. Perfect. I'm is going to join them. Good Jim and drag you in there. Um, okay. Perfect. Um, I am going to start the breakout rooms. And like I said, it's going to be about five minutes for you in those individual groups. And then we'll come back and see how it went. Is that everybody can join in, but what I hadn't, I hadn't uh, given it the thought of, you know, teams now will now be having to have discussions about who works home and who's, who's in the office. Uh, and then you don't have to take into account these individual arrangements. So you can have a team meeting that still, you could still have at any time. Mm -hmm. so I think that's a big pro if that would really work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And the, anyone else come to a pro or a con that they hadn't considered before or just struck them in a new way? Yeah, Ana Maria. Yeah, so I haven't thought about that, but when Dini mentioned that it was so obvious in the, as a con for in-person workshops or trainings, the how hard it is to do the documentation afterwards as a facilitator to take pictures and transcribe everything and how easier mirror boards or docs or whatever, like the online tools are making that for us. Mm -hmm. I thought like, oh, I was, I never thought about that. And it's like, that's a major pro for virtual con for in person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thanks, Linda, Dini. Melinda kind of brought that up too. in, in the, when we were doing the spectrum questions of just like the evidence or the, um, the word is escaping me right now, but that that ability to kind of produce things to show others afterward is so easy. 
one thing I will say as somebody who produces a lot of that stuff and gives it to people, I'm not sure anyone reads it. Um, like, I feel like we're like, yeah, here's the link. And uh, that link just lives and then it never gets um, done anything with. So I think one thing that's important with in-person or, or online is like, are we creating it for creating its sake? Or is it actually something that is like requested, wanted, um, going to be like actioned on? Um, like it's cool to have it and it is a hundred percent easier online. But I think a lot of it is just like, we're creating data that never actually gets used again. So that's something I, I think about sometimes just how many, how many recordings and documents exist that no one's ever going to watch or read. Okay. We are going to do one more breakout room as a, um, kind of a way to reflect on this experience before we close out. So, um, you're actually going to have a choice of, breakout room. You get to choose into which one you want to go. So there's going to be a, um, an out loud processing group. So if you want to like, you know, what did you, the question basically is, what are you taking away from this experience on butter today? And if you want to share that out loud, I want you to go into the out loud room. If you want to share that in the chat, then <laughs> I'll have you join in the chat only room. And then if you want to just silently reflect to yourself, then I'll ask you to join the silent reflection room. And that's just going to be a chance for you to just kind of process it. You can use your private notes again. Um, and maybe you're just more of an internal processor. So we are going to start those rooms. And the... I don't want to. No. Okay, open now. Great. So... You up too. at the top. Yes. Thank you, Anna Maria. <laughs> You're back. <laughs> you clicked top. on the overview. <laughs> yes, I did. Up at the top, there is a button that says main room. If you click on that button, you will get to select into the silent reflection space, chat reflection, or out loud. So which one you want to be in for the next three minutes? So we got a lot of out loud processors in this group. I hope you got to reflect and chat a little bit. We are coming to the end of our time together. So what I will ask you to do is, because I didn't get to hear basically anybody except for Jane's thoughts uh, as you kind of leave the session today, I would love you to put into the chat one thing you're thinking and one thing you're feeling as we wrap up today. So I'll give you one minute to do that. And then we'll close out. Thank you, Meg. Thank you, Meg. <laughs> Thanks. Bye bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. So we got a lot of out loud processors in this group. I hope you got to reflect and chat a little bit. We are coming to the end of our time together. So what I will ask you to do is because I didn't get to hear basically anybody except for Jane's thoughts uh, as you kind of leave the session today, I would love you to put into the chat one thing you're thinking and one thing you're feeling as we wrap up today. So I'll give you one minute to do that and then we'll close out. Okay. Processing what you saw. Yeah. Um, all right. So I want to end on time because I know often people are back to back and you got to go. So few things. Um, one is that for me, I always want to know the behind the scenes. And so please know that I have your email addresses and I will send a follow-up email with all of the behind the scenes and this recording of like what it looked like all on my side. Um, Anna Maria mentioned at the beginning, facilitator cards, that is my work and my business and what I do uh, all the time. And that's what we used to plan today's session. We did thinking and feeling and go around share and subcommittees and pro con lists and spectrum questions 
and polls and silent reflection and declarative pairs. So facilitator cards are how I plan every session. Uh, if you're curious about them, I'm gonna put a link in the chat uh, on there if you wanna check them out. If you wanna find me, uh, that's a good way to find me. I'm basically at facilitator cards uh, on all of the platforms, facilitator cards on all of the platforms. I am on LinkedIn as Meg Bolger. And uh, I'll also put my email in case you want to connect more directly. Uh, happy to continue to, uh, I love talking to other facilitators. You are my people. And uh, it was great to get to do this big experiment together today. Thank you for joining. Um, yes, this is my favorite way to do applause. Uh, yeah, we got soundboard, all right, coming in. Um, okay, if you got a jet off, I hope we overlap again in the digital or physical world. And uh, if you want to stick around and you have any questions, feel free to stick around. Otherwise, let's all unmute and we'll do a three, two, one, bye. Okay, so find the unmute. Three, two, one, bye. 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 <laughs> See y'all later. Thank you, Meg. Thank you, Meg. <laughs>